why burn one match when you could burn three? So today we're drawing with smoke. We're drawing with one of the most ancient drawing mediums there is, which is charcoal. And um, if you're a firebug like me, then you love that aspect of charcoal uh, too. So charcoal is burnt wood. And unlike pencil, which is graphite, which is carbon, this is also carbon, but it's um, the carbon of soot. So uh, it gives a blacker, less reflective line than graphite pencils, for instance. Okay, so this little match right here, and yes, please, um, this is Mike from LuxBlocks.com. I'm here uh, doing our part to give kids something to do at home over the COVID break. And um, uh, my background is art, so we thought we'd teach you, you guys, you kids and adults, a little bit about um, uh, our artistic background in, in the company and um, my know-how. Uh, I started as a muralist and a painter before I became a toy inventor. So th this is my favorite drawing medium, and it's the oldest drawing medium. You could imagine back in the ancient times when uh, there was fire and there were these big logs in the fire. This is an oak log that was had been burned. And if I take a piece of, if I just take a piece out of this oak that has been burned in the fire pit in the backyard by a bunch of teenagers, and um, which are kind of like cavemen, and I can just rub it against paper like this, you'll see that it makes a line. Now the beautiful thing about charcoal is, is that you don't know necessarily what kind of line it's gonna make, especially when you pull it off of an old log that's been burned in a fire. But this is why I absolutely freaking love charcoal because it has a kind of a soul to it. You don't have to be any kind of an art expert to take a piece of charcoal, a, just a, not a store-bought charcoal, but a part charcoal from a fire pit, and just start making marks that have, like I said, a life and a spirit. If I've been drawing with, um, uh, you know, pens, and pencils, they have a they're very thin line. They're kind of, I think they're kind of intellectual. But charcoal has a uh, soul. It really has soul. And soul's important, okay? So um, here, here is um, how a match draws. Okay, it's very, you'll see it's very, it just breaks, right? So you have to be very gentle with, with a piece of uh, the, the wood from a match stick, okay? It'll draw a nice line, a beautiful line. What I do is I twist it in my hand. I actually twist charcoal in my fingers like that, and, I, and I'll gent, do a gentle, gentle drag, and it'll make a beautiful line. You can make a push. You can make, do all kinds of lines, okay? But you'll see that this burns out very quickly. It's not ideally suited, nor was the oak for charcoal for drawing. So what we normally use is willow. Oh, willow. Willow is the amazing it's also very 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 delicate so delicate but the lines that willow makes like i said it's there's a poetry to charcoal so look at the line i can, if i go really gently it'll make a real gentle line almost like just smoke on paper and if i keep and you see there's, there's, when i break it it makes a sharp little edge you can always turn to keep that sharp edge and you can as you turn you can make just a thing. Like when, when I want to be really expressive, I wanted to kind of the randomness of the charcoal to kind of guide me into an, a, a picture, okay? So I'll let it kind of just move almost willy nilly. And so I'm gonna make an eye with charcoal and I'm just, and this is when I'm mostly just experimenting. I don't really know what's gonna happen but I'm just, especially if I'm out of ideas, for instance, because you know, I run out of ideas, I'll just um, doodle with this and, and just kind of let, keep, I keep doing this, I keep doing that. See that, see how it moves? So it's moving and it's also being dragged across the paper. So the line has a life to it. The line has a life to it. Every line has kind of a, is an independent little voter. Every line is a little participant in this drawing. And the drawing has to be a, a kind of a coming together of all of these lines. And the early drawing, that's why in the Renaissance so much beautiful art came about because the artist knew the process of beauty it has to come about through a very tender approach where out of the smoke, the sfumato, out of the smoke is revealed a beautiful thing. And it's the artist's job or the poet's job or the musician's songwriter's job to hear in the randomness and in the smoke 
the, the thing that they, they're the identifier of the, the you know, the, the fleeting little angels, the, the fleeting beautiful line, the fleeting beautiful combination of notes, and they, ta they dutifully take them down and boldly go into, then they more boldly go into what they think is like, aha, the essential. This is what I was, th this is what I'm, I'm gonna commit to. And they'll start darkening and making more bold a, a design, okay? But at first it was just this kind of stuff. Okay, so that's a willow. Willow is just a very, very precious, tender, dear line and drawing medium. And again, I just, I just play with it. I just go like that, and I don't know where it's going to take me at first. It could take me anywhere. I'm, I'm concentrating more on faces today because I love drawing faces, and when I'm doodling, I often stick with faces. But it, 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 they're, for, to me, they're, they're just so much fun because a face, a human face, has in it so much personality and so much potential for your imagination, story power, that you could put a story around a person's face that the artist had no intention of, but, but the person looking at it, the, the artist draws the audience in to be part of the, part of the artistic process because in the, what I'm seeing, you're seeing something different too, right? But we're all seeing something here in this design. See how, see how these break? These just crumble. I can just smush that in my hand. But that's okay. And then you could always come in with something big, a big honking thing like that. And you could add a different kind of line. So these pieces of charcoal here do this. Oh my gosh, look at that. So beautiful. Charcoal is, to my thinking, the greatest of the art medium still. Since the dawn of time, uh, charcoal is one of the best. Because, again, it's, it's smoke. It's smoke. And smoke, smoke is kind of like a, a visual spirit. Smoke is like a visual spirit because, it, and that's why we think of the Holy Ghost and ghosts as being, you know, these things in smoke. Because smoke has in it little visions. Our brain races to try to make, like clouds, it tries to make sense of what we're looking at and our, and our, our ima imagination, our imagination will process the smoke and find the patterns within it, right? It'll want to see in that smoke something. And then our brain designs and makes something from it that is fun. You know, it's... So... If you want to do your kid a favor, go to Dick Blick or Michael's and pick them up something nice and dirty like charcoal. Charcoal is just an absolute, and they might not like it at first. They might like say, oh, I like crayons or I like, you know, ballpoint pens or whatever, or whatever kind of sparkly things they're drawing with. But if all they have is charcoal to work with, I'm a zygomatic arch here. I don't know what I'm making. And the thing is, I don't have to erase. I could just go like that and smudge. I haven't even talked about that yet, but this is a, almost like finger painting too. I could smudge this out. So you have to understand the early man, early woman, they had the fire pit and they had charcoal available to them and they, and they didn't have paper, of course, but what they had was they can draw on bone or on a piece of rock or of course on the cave wall. And what they did was, and I'm not gonna do it here because it's kind of gross and this is COVID time, so I won't do it, but they would actually put, uh, they'd put charcoal in their mouth and they put a little bit of water in their mouth, maybe, and they'd chew it up and they'd spit it out on the wall and spray paint with the charcoal or with, with whatever kind of clay was around. Probably not the safest thing to do, but they can make beautiful kind of spray painted patterns with, with uh, the charcoal, okay? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we've been talking about. So if I wanted to draw, let's say a person and Pontormo, Pontormo, P O N T O R M O, is one of my favorite artists. And Pontormo was famous. He was uh, uh, kind of a Baroque, neoclassical painter, uh, a little after Leonardo. And Pontormo was famous for making, uh, he, had, he was a mannerist. He mannerized, which means he exaggerated the human form. And what was wonderful about Pontormo was he was not afraid to really let the charcoal in the medium, he experimented with lines. He let that charcoal. He let things like that guide him. 
this beautiful line machine that's the hand and, and the medium, the thing that, this crazy uh, thing we have, these fingers that can do this kind of dance. He said, that's important. We gotta bring that in the process. It's not all about our head and what's in our head, but it's with our hand and then our eye and mind's ability to see the beauty in that and to, and to latch on to and, and put an exclamation point around something that we discovered in the beautiful, cloudy, spiritual nature of, of art. Because it is a spiritual pursuit. It's kind of like, um, I don't know, it's like art, artists are kind of like shaman in a way. They kind of are reading the tea leaves. They're, they're, they're looking at the smoke and they're kind of, they're kind of showing us, hey, this, there's something to this. There's a, there's a poetry, there's a beauty here. There's a deeper meaning here, a meaningfulness. And it's, not, it's nothing we could put words around. You know, it's something that's uh, something that's special and new and important and beautiful. And he and Pontormo would look at these lines and he'd say, ah, "I, I see an angel's face, or I see a, I see a person from from Greek mythology here. I, I see a, a proud princess." You know, he'd see, and I, he, and he'd say, I'm going to put this in a mural in, in the Count's uh, garden because this is, is someone that I can make a character out of, beautiful milkmaid or whatever it's going to be, right? So from that swirling, swirling silliness, this stuff here, our brain could latch on to a lovely eye, right? Something, something, something important. Okay, now another thing that, that uh, artists in the Renaissance loved to draw was the horse. Leonardo uh, made probably the horse the most famous. He was a great horse artist. And the horse is a really beautiful thing to draw because it has great lines. And it's a beautiful thing to draw with charcoal because the horse is poetry in motion. And charcoal is all about poetry in motion. So the lines on a horse are essentially this. The, the, the nose is an arch like that. It's important you think of it that way, okay? And then there's a jaw that's like this. I don't like to break the horse up into these kind of shapes. I think that's kind of not poetic. I'd rather say, okay, there's the jaw line here. There's the eye in here with the zygomatic arch. It's a beautiful eye. Make it a proud, beautiful horse eye. There's a, a dent behind the eye, right? There's some bone under here where the jaw goes to the chin. The beautiful horse lips. And I could change this later if, it's, if my proportions are wrong. Mane. Neck. Big, strong horse neck. Throat. Ear. Now, charcoal is not the neatest medium, right? And it's usually a beginning medium. So what I mean by that is it's, it's probative. We probe art with charcoal. We, our first forays, our first investigations into a design might be charcoal. And it might be a sloppy freaking mess. It might be all wrong. But it's a very cheap and expensive medium to use. And what we can do is we can keep erasing and pushing the, the smoke around. We can keep... We, we, don't, we won't cry over spilt milk with, with charcoal. We're not ruining anything, really, because we can keep fixing it and working it, changing it. And this doesn't matter if it breaks. You just get to play more. Turn the ear this way so it's an angry horse. Angry horses are prettier, I think. Okay? And they can have the hair like an Arabian stallion here, the, the messy hair. Okay, maybe there's a, maybe there's a, there's a bet and reins and it's Napoleon's horse or something or a general's horse or a, a, in a cavalry or it's a knight's horse or maybe it's a race horse and it's got one of these things on, right? So you see how this is an experimental medium. That's why, again, why it's one of the best mediums because charcoal is about experimentation and all the best science, all the best art, all the best everything, architecture comes out of experimentation. And when uh, we're solving, we're solving covid because we're experimenting, trial and error. Here's another kind of charcoal. It's a little bit harder, okay? It doesn't break as easy. It's much tougher, okay? But with it, I can draw 
much more like a, I could draw with a pencil. But again, I'm going to turn. When I do, I'm going to move my hand like that. Lips, chin, underbite. Is that an overbite? Okay. See so the different kinds of lines I'm making just by doing this. Okay. Let me give them less of a hook nose, more of a nose like that, and then, and then maybe a zygomatic arch, neck, ear, hair. Okay. And you can work really small too. You can work tiny. You can work tiny, little tiny. And actually, you get better results oftentimes with the tiny little faces. They're so adorable. And just a little tiny mark could mean so much. Because the human mind, it's your mind that makes things out of the stuff. There's no real face here, of course. These are just lines, 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 right? But your mind will make it into something. That's the beauty of art. Our mind makes it into something that wasn't there before. Our mind wants to see something. It could be something gross and scary, right? Or it could be something happy. And again, this isn't gonna be a long video today, but I wanna emphasize one more time how important it is to put charcoal in your kids' hands, okay? And it can start as simple as getting a box of matches out. Why not? They wanna do it. You might as well let them. You know, don't take the, take, take the mystery out of this stuff, right? Take the mystery out of it. It's charcoal, it's fire. You know, whoa, that just exploded. It's, this, this is a gift from the gods, man. This, this, is, this is the most important thing that we've ever had our hands on. And that's why it's good to put it in kids' hands because then you're giving them the real gift, okay? This is the gift. And have them, have them make writing with it. Have them, have them do their writing. You saw before, I took that piece of oak, this piece of oak from a log, right? And look at, I can make calligraphy with it. Calligraphy is when you have two... Basically, you have two lines, like two pencils or two pieces of whatever, and it, and it makes a parallel line, like two blue angel jets flying in formation, right? This is the power of calligraphy, because a calligraphy pen, which is a flat pen, right? At first, if it's flat, it makes this line. If it's going sideways, it makes this line, right? And the beautiful thing about calligraphy is when they, can you combine them, look what it does. Oh my goodness, look what it does. No talent needed here, boys and girls. I'm making a beautiful flowing ribbon with two pieces of charcoal. But I can take, I can take that piece of oak that I took off this, this big log here, right? That I burned outside, my teenagers burned outside. And I just drag it and look what happens. Oh wow, look at that. That has so much personality, right? And now look what I do. I'm going to take it and go like this. Let's see. Let's get a good line out of it. I found a good line. Okay, I found one. Okay, good. So look at Whoa. You know, by itself, it's absolutely just gorgeous. Just this charcoal on a piece of paper. And this is just printer paper from, from Target, okay? By itself, it's beautiful. Let's see if I can do a letter. Let's see. I'll do the, I'll do the letter. T. Let's see. I'll do in calligraphy. You have these different rules. So I'll do an A. Right. B. Oh, this one totally crumbled on me. Oh, I could always go to this guy here. My little standby. I'll do the doubles. Here's my doubles. Two pieces of charcoal. So put them together. Poor man's calligraphy. Right? See how that works? So calligraphy, so you could just use two pencils, but we're talking about charcoal today. And that is what they do. And again, one more time, 
Charcoal is an experimental medium, which makes it the most, one of the most powerful mediums. So when you draw with it, you can always keep correcting because it's just smoke. You don't have to commit to anything. And it's, you draw on cheap paper like this, this is printer paper, which is not really expensive. Twist, 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 use a thumb and index finger. Use your fingers, twist, twist, twist. The first lines should be the most tender lines, the most probative lines. Probity, you know, Ang, the great artist. Ang, I-N-G-R-E-S. It looks like ingress, but it's Ang. Ang was a French portrait painter in the neoclassical era in France, around the time of Napoleon. And he said the drawing was the probity of art. This is, probity is our way of finding things out, trial and error. Okay, so I don't know where the eye is going to go yet, so I'm going to play around and say, oh, yeah, I see the eye. Oh, and I'll take a sharp part and go, yeah, the eye is going to go there. I'm going, to, I'm going to commit to an eye here for now. For now, I guess I'll change my mind. I'm a Gemini. I'll change my mind again. And here, oh, yeah, pretty. Some wide set. You know, when the eyes are wide set, the person seems a little bit smarter. Kind of the cruelty of people with narrow set eyes, I think, is that wide set eyes people seem a little bit more sensitive. A little bit more wise. It's not that it's true, but that's how. Huh? Like Sylvester the Pussycat kind of looks like a dummy. And his eyes are kind of close together. So this jaw looks like this can come in a little bit. See, I just corrected it by doing that. There's no eraser. We don't need no erasers. The back of the neck there, the trapezius, right? The, the neck has muscles that go like that. And the back, the back muscles go into it, right? And I don't worry about being sloppy because I know I can just smooth that out later, right? Under most great paintings was a charcoal drawing. Did you know that? Under most great paintings was first a drawing in smoke, in charcoal. Uh, Leonardo's name for smoke was um, sfumato, drawing with smoke, with a, a drawing technique he designed, developed, okay? I can break this again and just come with a little piece and I can come in like that and turn it into paint and start finger painting with my charcoal. So now I'm, now I'm painting, right? Now, now I'm, and again, paint is expensive compared to, to, to this dust. So you can, you can work out, uh, and great artists often did, they'd work out their painting problems first in a very cheap medium like this, and they'd work out their design and their characters, whether they're from the Bible or some famous battle, or a historical thing that they were illustrating, whatever it was going to be, they'd work it out. They'd work it out first in charcoal. Maybe this is going to be an apostle. I don't know. Okay. So this is Mike from Lux Blocks. Next week we'll be doing some other kind of artistic thing, but I wanted to turn you on to to charcoal. You know, the poor man's art medium that's the greatest art medium of all, of all time. And if you can't afford to go to Dick Blick or, or anywhere, uh, Michael's or anywhere to get charcoal, then just get, get your kid outside or inside and be careful in the kitchen maybe and it's by a sink and burn some wood, okay? And uh, talk about like the cavemen and the early people. Maybe even put some in your mouth and, and chew it up and spit it on something. Maybe we'll do that next week. And talk about like, you know, what it, what it means to move smoke around on paper, okay? And, and what, what, what appears and how cool is that, okay? So be a great parent, be a great lover. I'll see you next week. It's Mike from Lux Blocks. Thank you.